are you ready for your first season in charge of the Wines and Wolves? Yeah, I think so. Um, we've had a long pre-season. Um, we started just before Christmas with a bit of a trial period. Quite a lot of interest with people wanting to come in and stuff like that. So got a bit of a trial out of the way. Um, so the girls have been working hard for the last few months. So yeah, I think we're ready now. How do you and all the other clubs catch the, the top three? And so uh, I think for us this year we've focused on sort of closing the gap off field in terms of standards and what we offer the girls. Um, we've had a much more varied pre-season, we've, we've had a lot more benefits for the girls and trying to do all those little things that really are important to those female players um, and I think once we close the gap off the field the performances will start to come on the field. How important is it to be a female coach in a female sport? Because it's something that I obviously I have no idea about how women behave in on and off the pitch. I think I think especially because I played last year and, and had quite a lot of playing experience, I kind of understand what they appreciate as players and what makes them tick. Um, so I suppose understanding female athletes as a female myself is kind of got that little bit of an insight. Um, having relatively recently retired as well um, I'm probably in the fortunate position that I I know what we were lacking last year and, and what gaps we need to close so I think it, it, it's obviously going to be a benefit to understand the female mind and, and how that works a little bit more. I feel strange to ask you about because it, it sounds like a stupid thing to say. Um, how have you found the transition from playing to coaching? Yeah it's been good um, it's something that I made sure that I made a priority was it was putting that barrier in place and that boundary and um, the night the girls found out I kind of left the girls group chat and stuff like that and made that sort of definitive line in the sand and on um, a different role within the group um, I obviously have friends within that playing group last year so I've tried really hard to make sure I've put a line between myself and the players and, and I've got that off-field relationship but when we're, we're in and we're training and we're together it's, it's player coach. Is that hard to do then just to have that completely do, completely draw the line and say this is I thought it'd be now. more difficult than it has been um, um, but the girls have been really receptive to me as a coach. Um, maybe that's because they had the respect for me as a player, um, but they've been receptive to me as a coach. I think they've made that transition easy for me. How have you strengthened the squad in the offseason? We've got some exciting youth coming through. Um, we, we knew we had to focus our recruitment um, away from those big teams. Um, we didn't perform very well on the field, so we were never going to attract those sort of big names in the game. But I think we've attracted some really exciting young talent um, and we're really excited to see them go. We've, we've got nine graduate from the academy um, last season and this. Um, we've brought in uh, one of our young players, Anna. She's a, an England touch player. so really good feet, really good skill um, and we've tried to identify that next wave of sort of your, your pathway and your England players um, and I think we've done that quite well this year so I'm excited to see how them youngsters go. Is that the way it's, it has to be to grow when you're outside the top three? You, you build steadily from within and uh, yeah. totally close the gaps? Like yeah that. I think so and I think the way the game's going as well um, it's a far more athletic game, prop forwards aren't a traditional prop forward anymore, they're athletes and I think you've got to kind of grow away from the mould at the minute. Um, like I said, we, we hope to change the narrative this year on what Warrington is and what they can offer. Um, and I think we've started to do that. I think people are looking at us more favourably off the field. Um, but we had to channel our recruitment slightly different than some of those top teams will. And I, I think we've achieved what we wanted to in that respect. This is going to sound like a stupid question, but it's something Amanda said on the stage about women's rugby league different to men's rugby league. What, what does that mean? Do you, do you know what she meant by that? Yeah, I think there's facets of the game that are the same, but we've we physically we are different and the game will be played at a slightly different speed and, and stuff like that for example offloads the men's game is far more fruitful in offloads we don't have that in the women's game yet the speed of the game is different the intensity uh, the skill level I think we're, we're massively closing the gap in terms of skill but the game's played slightly different and you have to understand female players to play against females and just body wise people have balls in different positions because of, of what's going on physically so I think we we have to understand how females play to, to play that game. Does that give you an advantage then as, as a female coach going into this competition against teams which have a male coach? I, I mean the male coaches in the game have worked hard to understand the game and I, I think they understand that it is a different sport obviously Matty and Dennis and people like that they've put a lot of time and effort to understanding the female game like I said I think my probably benefit is that experience of having played with this group and wave of Super League players and some of the teams that I'll now coach against the teams that I had to prep to play against last year so I'm hoping we can kind of pull on that experience as well.